This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring retired FBI special agent Jennifer Coffindaffer. I, I did ask about uh, him playing with the pantyhose on Banfield. <laughs> I said, you know, I, I got to ask this about the evidence because you were talking about the pantyhose. And I said, I, I got to just throw this out there because I've talked to like 10 FBI agents since this happened. And everyone I've talked to has said they just utterly cringed when they saw him playing with the pantyhose on Banfield. And he's like, yeah, you know, we did that. And I'm paraphrasing here, you know, to gain some attention because we needed the attention of the nation on this case to get anything moving more forward. Again, paraphrasing, you can hear the whole interview on the podcast of my interview with Gary Upton, which I found that to be, I mean, strategy, I guess, but I don't know. At the same point, holding evidence around like that seems extremely unethical and, and also dangerous to contaminate it. No, <laughs> no. And I would love you to ask the other nine FBI agents. That's just a big no. Yeah. Uh, no, no, big no. You don't do that to gain the attention. Listen, this is what I think is really at the core bothering me. And mm-hmm. I've really looked hard into each case that has been discussed. And when I say looked hard into it, in terms of what the investigative authorities, what is KBI saying? Well, mm-hmm. KBI says that the woman in Hayes is absolutely not connected to BTK with everything they know, all the new evidence so far, not connected that they found. They're willing to, of course, listen to anything else that comes forward. Sure. But that's their position. Same with Garber in Missouri. You know, Mm -hmm. that investigator and, you know, I'm privy to different communications she's had where, you know, her point is, listen, you know, this shouldn't be a media circus. Mm -hmm. This is about finding truth. And these families thinking about what, if it were BTK, what their kids would have gone through, the torture Mm -hmm. and everything that would have been associated is just very painful for them to be on a roller coaster of, was it him or was it not him? What did she go through? What did she not? And so it's very difficult. And so when I look at the investigators who have investigated these cases, in some cases for more than a decade and spent their life trying to figure this out, their life's work Mm -hmm. as detectives, I pay that a lot of credence. Um, I was glad to see there was a kind of a task force put together. Yeah. But I was confused by that task force. Having been on many task forces in my career, Mm -hmm. I was just, I, I was confused. A task force to me is, and I've written two different ones. You write them out, for instance, an OSADEF task force, and there's very... Uh, specific parameters uh, that it involves dr- organized crime and, and drug distribution. I did the DAST tra- task force, and that was about air airport uh, security and terrorism. Mm-hmm. So put together that and then ask for each of the partners to come on board and they sign and they agree and everybody knows what they're contributing. Mm -hmm. Are they contributing money? Are they contributing bodies? Are they contributing a cell phone analysis? Whatever we're asking, right? The task force member. And it's all written out and it has to be approved from the heads of each agency. I would never, ever, in forming these task forces, nor would my bosses, nor would the SAC in charge, want the media involved. Mm -hmm. It's, they're not, it's, these task forces should be charged with finding truth. Yeah. And people in the media have no subpoena power, no search warrant authority. They have no authority Mm -hmm. to do anything. Yeah. uh, In regard to investigations. Yeah. They can only report. So, bring evidence to bear and figure out if there was any involvement. I'm just giving great pause. Yeah. I mean, there, there is certainly, because there has been a lot of criticism about the liberties that the sheriff has taken, especially with obtaining evidence, going to out areas outside of his jurisdiction, warrants obtained, all of that up in the air with a lot of great concern. 
and seemingly not necessarily thinking about the long picture here, the long game of, okay, if you are, your goal is to convict BTK on another murder or multiple murders, there are still protocols that need to be followed if you don't want this thing thrown out of court because of the way that you handled the investigation. And it does feel to me like this is kind of ragtag and... You know, everybody kind of has these jobs here and there. There's some great people on the task force. Some are regular guests on this show. But again, like you said, it's just, it doesn't seem like real, <laughs> I guess, or le <laughs> legit enough to stand up in court. Oh, not at all. I mean, the, you know, from the media standpoint, yeah. there's absolutely no purpose, yeah. zero purpose. And at the end of the day, as and, you know, Carrie and I are friends. I mean, yeah. she calls me her sister. She yeah. calls me and we talk. And so, of course, I knew about the task force. I what I did not know and what I had always understood was the task force would be made up of law enforcement personnel, mm -hmm. not of media or social media or any sort of media because they don't have anything to bear yeah, no. in terms of an investigation. And, you know, when you hear from like the investigators that have poured their heart and soul into these cases, and I can tell you from working cases, cases can become personal. You have to maintain your objectivity, but personal in terms of your commitment to solve them. Yeah. You know, you more than anyone else, when you've worked years on something and given your really your heart and soul to a case, especially a case like Garber, mm -hmm. for heaven's sakes, hog tied with, I think, eight different sorts of ligature, by the way, none of which were pantyhose, yeah. sexually assaulted, by the way, you know, just the MO was completely outside of it any yeah. MO of BTK. And I know, you know, I guess it could be considered that maybe he altered his MO for the 10 that he murdered in, in Kansas. You know, I guess that's a possibility. But we, when you read what that investigator has to say, it's so clear that she wants justice for this family. Mm -hmm. She could care less about any media. She could care less about any limelight. She just wants truth. And at the end of the day, that's what everyone wants is truth. And, and hopefully that's what will be found. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.